Hey everybody, welcome, I'm glad that you're here. So I have something that I wanna show you that it might not be applicable to a large amount of folks, but for those people that need to know how to do this, this is going to be very useful for you. What we're going to do is we're going to take an external Mac Apple based CD DVD player and I'm going to show you how we can actually use it on a Windows based system. This is very useful. These devices are great, they're portable, they're small and such, but the problem is they're only really designed to work with Mac equipment. So if I plug it into, for example, a brand new Mac M1, no problem, it recognized this device right away. If I plug it into a Windows system, it won't work, except I'm going to show you how to make it work. And you might wonder, why do you wanna do that? The world is full of streaming media these days. Well, what if you have CDs, like I do, that you cannot find this music on any type of streaming service? These are some CDs by a jazz musician I like named John Zorn, and I've had a hard time finding his full catalog on any of the streaming services. <clears throat> so this way I can listen to my John Zorn music. And if you like John Zorn, you're automatically one of the cool kids. Comment down below if you're a cool kid. If you want to be a cool kid, subscribe to the channel. Not that I'm going to play any music that's copyrighted, but subscribe to the channel, like it, and do all that stuff. That's also a way to become a cool kid. Now, the other thing that you might want to have is let's say you've got old documentaries. I really like watching a lot of these old documentaries. Some of them, yeah, they're, they're digitized now. You can find them out there on the streaming services. But some of these are, again, getting hard to find. And what I find with some of the streaming services is that they're rotating a lot of the content, which means that some content that I want to watch is not available when I want to watch it. I've got things like some comedy stuff, some Monty Python stuff that I like to watch. I've got really old science fiction stuff that I like, Space 1999, for anybody who knows what that is. Um, I've got just a ton, anything from, from Star Trek to um, you know, DuckTales. There's all sorts of DVDs that I have. And I thought at one point, oh, I'll just get rid of all my physical media and I'll just go digital. I found that's easier said than done. So the problem again, like I say, is I wanna have one device. I wanna have this one external device. I don't wanna to have to buy one for PC, one for Apple, and I wanna use this one device everywhere. So let me show you how we can use this one device across both platforms. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the support at apple.com, and we're gonna look up Bootcamp, which will allow us to download the Bootcamp support software. Now, theoretically, this is for if you're going to install a bootcamp system on your Mac, Intel Mac, but we're going to download these files. And once we've downloaded these files, what we can do is extract them. So we're going to extract them on our Windows system and it will actually allow us to do that. Once we've, dis once we've extracted these files, we'll be able to go into the bootcamp drivers folder and you'll see a bunch of different systems. We're gonna go into Apple and there is actually an Apple optical disk drive installer, ODD installer. We're going to install this on our system and that's going to allow us to install the drivers that are needed for the DVD, the optical drive. Now, theoretically, this should be on an, on an Intel Mac that we're doing this, but in fact, what we're doing is we're installing it on whatever type of Windows systems we have. And now you can see we have our drive there. I'm gonna download a VLC viewer, so I'm just gonna pop a DVD into this drive. You can see it appears in my Explorer here. Now, when I've installed a video player like VLC, I pop it in, you can see I've got a Space 1999 DVD in there. I'm gonna open it up with that DVD player. Whatever software you use to play your DVDs is fine, and I'm looking at DVDs on my Windows machine using a Mac drive. I hope that was useful. I hope that you're thinking, okay, great, I can buy one device, use it across both platforms, and that it's something that gives you access to a lot of those physical resources that you had. You can, as somebody's probably gonna comment down below, you can also use this to play the music and then use software to copy that music into a digital format. And yes, you can convert videos into a digital format as well, but that's depending on the licensing and what you're legally entitled to do in the places where you live. So I'm not gonna comment on that or show you how to do that particular activity. Yes, it can be done. And yes, this is a way that you can make that happen. So I hope the, use, the, I hope the useful was video. I hope the video was useful. And if it was, again, like, subscribe, and comment down below. Is that something that you think you're going to do? Do you have a physical media library that you want to still maintain access to? I'd be really interested in knowing because I think that 
the physical media that we have is still something that we're going to want to be able to access in the future. I know it's the same way for me with retro video games. I have a whole bunch of consoles just so I can play some of my favorite video games, even though they are theoretically very outdated and very old. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video, which maybe will have a broader appeal. Thanks so much again.